This way, we're not bothering to raise it out of taxation twice. It'll just be a pass-through. Uh, so that's the request from the Abenaki Snow Riders. You'll see it again when the board approves all the non-budget warrant articles. Um, as you know, and I just want to make, I think this is the first time we can make it a public statement, the uh, Madison Paper Abatement Hearing is the 28th uh, of April. Um, 
Our attorney has a, encouraged as many people to attend as possible. 25th. 25th. That's right. Sorry. Um, the 28th is the day I go to Florida, so that's probably why that day was on my mind. So on that day, on Thursday at 9 a.m. down in Augusta, the 25th, um, the, our lawyer is uh, saying the more people that show up for that hearing, probably the more influential that will be. So we're, I know that there are several people interested in driving down. If you are able to do that as uh, selectmen and assessors, I think that would be uh, a good, strong showing. That, that's right next to the Capitol building. Right, to so the Burton Cross building. Right. Um, the other question is, will that be all day, do you think? No, this should be half a day at least, hopefully, hopefully less than that. Um, there is some lawyer talk. I did not realize that. So both our attorney and Madison Paper's attorney will be able to make a brief closing argument. Okay. And then the board will deliberate, and there's no input from anybody at that time. Once they deliberate, then it's up to them completely. Um, just to give you an update on tax acquired properties, uh, the one on 57 Maple Street was paid off. The one on 144 Whittier Farm Road, they received their funds, but we haven't received the funds yet. They hope to clear that up this week. And the one on 19 Middle Street, we did receive a $200 payment at the first of the month, first part of April. So I believe that's that person's intentions to do that the first of every month. And that's all I have. Uh, new business. Number one, the Department Head reports. Is there a real picture? Well, as you can see, it's snowing again, and it's April 7th or whatever it is. They say next Monday is another one. Next Monday is another one. Pardon? Next Monday is another one. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Should I order another call now? Or 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 <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new. Uh, been working on vehicles in the garage, getting some wild paint up, and getting ready to take the wings off and put in stores for the winter, off in the summer. And uh, I hand on a few summer projects that we're going to be working on around town. And guys are planning their vacation. And other than that, that's about it. I do have some sidewalks and stuff to discuss under the uh, fifth spending. So when we get to that, I'll talk about that. Um, one of the things that, one of the cures for the weather that the road commissioner has is he's going to Florida. In a couple days. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell everybody, didn't you? Yeah, make sure that's documented. <laughs> um, if, if you have any concerns while the Royal Commissioner is gone, direct them to me and I'll direct them to him. We plan on being in touch. Um, the chain of command will remain the same uh, while he's out of, out of touch. Um, last year was the first year that we didn't use our trackless machine for roadside mowing and we actually rented a piece of equipment. Uh, Road Commissioner has been in contact with uh, Aggressive Cuts, a long cutting service, and they've worked out some of the details on a three year contract that they've proposed. Did you, are you prepared to talk about that? Tonight? Yes, his, his name is uh, Brett Tinder Packet. Yeah. He runs a, a uh, mowing company that strictly mows roadsides for towns and cities throughout central Maine and down east Maine. He came highly recommended by a lot of other road commissioners, uh, but the only thing is he wants to do a three-year contract. He will not do just year to year because he has gotten stuck before. His, his rates are very competitive. He can have this whole town done in less than two days with two of his machines. So what he'll do is, if you guys approve this, he'll coordinate it with uh, Mercer and another surrounding town that does a one-time mowing. He has two. He has two plans: a one-time mowing, which would be late June, early July, or a two-season mowing, which will be the first of June or and the first of September. And obviously, the second mowings, you know, obviously more. But uh, we're going to try. I like to try it just for a year. The one-time mowing, the end of July, at the end of June, first of July. And see how things go and then if we feel we need to up it and the price is competitive compared to what we rented the machine last year for so we don't have to provide an operator and or the fuel everything is included in the price of whatever that was on the sheet. so if i'm reading this right the price is 2625 dollars mm -hmm. same for three years yes correct 
just so you know, we spent twenty nine hundred dollars just getting a machine last year, and then Peter Payne drove. Yes, Peter. Peter run the machine, and then put we had to put our own fuel and maintain it for two weeks or whatever it was. <clears throat> so we had outline what roads, what's our, our, the town roads only. You know, uh, River Road, Old County roads. I believe it's right around forty miles, give or take. Uh, we still will do some of the smaller stuff around town with our machine, but we won't be putting anywhere near the hours on it that uh, we have in the past. You said you don't want to do three year, you're going to do one year? No, he needs a three year contract. Okay, and, you're, and you said only one time and the, the documentation we have in front of us that work, work will be performed twice a, twice a year. Only if we choose to. We can upgrade if we, if we need to. It says on the, read down the paragraph of agreement price, the work described here in the new form twice a year. So what he's written up is twice a year mowing for 26, 20 months. Yeah, that's the paper that the contract that he gave me, which is, is not, I did not have, that's all I had in this paper here. Uh, that was something that he must have put in that I overlooked. But we can show the change at any ways. So it was twenty six twenty five per mowing. So if we said exactly, and you have the decision to, yeah, we need to do it again. Call him and he'll come do it, kind of thing. Well, if he'll, if, what he does is he comes early and he comes late. So yeah. if we choose, we're going to choose the mid season mowing, which will be end of June. So it'll be just one time this year. Okay. If we choose next year to do it twice, then we would let him know mm -hmm. he would come the 1st of June and the 1st of September and August 1st September. Is there a language in his contract that gives him an out or us an out if we're not happy? Yes. Yeah, somewhere in here. He does have that I right yeah. now. I, I just want to make sure. Of, I don't mind. Because I, I know these guys that can't buy equipment if they don't have in the long term contract. Uh, his, he is, I did, uh, I have the, uh, he sent the, uh, the uh, pamphlet of all uh, his resume, his, uh, resumes and uh, uh, pictures of his equipment. His, his equipment is only two, two or three years old. It's well kept. Yeah. And uh, he, that's, his, that's his business. That's what he does all summer long. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I don't, I, I don't have an issue with it. I just wanted to make sure that we were looking for you know, these kick-out clauses and stuff like that because they don't want to get in that same situation we had with that guy at the moment cemetery. Exactly. You didn't come, so... <laughs> you didn't come, so we got to... That's right. We got to have a non-show up right. contract. Yeah, we got to have... Yeah, we got to have <laughs> some way to get rid of him if he doesn't show up. All right, and so... we have to pay you. Yeah, that's right. So, can we get a motion to accept the roadside mowing agreement with... The aggressive cuts of LLC. Yep. So moved. I'll second it for discussion. All right, we have a, a motion and a second to accept the three year contract with aggressive cuts LLC. Questions, Mr. Rooney? Um, what line did we put this in? We already have a line in the highway department for rental equipment. That's where you're going to take it, yep. rental equipment? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's on a rental equipment. I think there's a line this year on roadside and mowing, I believe. I mean, they're right next to each other. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But there's, there's sufficient money for this. Okay. For one time. For this year. Right. Yes, one time. Yep. Okay. If, if you sign a three-year contract, do you have to pay the three years up front, or do you go year by year? Year to year. Okay. And I, I'm not sure. I don't think he's asking for any money up front. Is he? He's going to bill you for his hours. He'll, he'll bill because what he'll do is he, he'll he'll meet with me at the end of April after the snow is all gone and show him, you know, where we need to be mowed, and then he'll do his measurement on the miles. So, um, so he'll bill us for the exact miles. It won't be. So he, he mows by the mile? Yes. Yeah. So really this is a three-year commitment. And Pretty much. He's going to mow it and it's to not to exceed this amount. Yes. And, but he could come in less. Yes. Okay. Correct. And you're, you're a willing person to guarantee this won't be gone by the end of April? Uh, no. <laughs> Where he's going to vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Seeing no other
some questions. All those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Thank you. We will. I'll, I'll strike that. Touch base on uh, fire, police, and code enforcement. Okay. Um, the fire portion, uh, obviously, you saw the, the new equipment that was under the FEMA grant. That's a 95% grant, so that's $45,000 worth of equipment that the town fire department will actually spend about $2,200 out of pocket on for all of that equipment. Awesome. Mr. Moody. Do we own it yet? That equipment. Pardon me? Have we bought that equipment? We haven't uh, drawn down the money yet, but the uh, contractors brought it up, and this is they, they've uh, demoed three different companies, and this is the one they want. So we haven't paid for it yet. And it's going to, for all that, it's going to cost us 2200 bucks? Yes. Good Lord, there is a lot, ain't there? Well, there is, there, that's the, the FEMA Assistance to Firefighters Grant. We have another grant in for a truck this year. That would be really great if we had the same kind of luck on that one. Mm -hmm. Also, Don passed out, uh, as the selectman requested at the last meeting, his, uh, his five-year capital plan. Now, in that plan on that first page, basically you'll see there's two lines for every year. His main concern is putting aside money for a vehicle, a fire truck replacement, and putting aside money for the SCBAs, the breathing apparatus. So basically those things are, are outlined there. That last sheet of paper with a really small print on it, that is the town's capital improvement plan, uh, which if the board wants to spend greater detail looking at that in a future meeting, we can. But what I've done is I've plugged in what Chief gave me for fire into that plan and what Jeff gave for highway into that plan, uh, along with a couple other uh, items to kind of flesh that out. And I just wanted to mention, if uh, they haven't seen it, the sheriff's uh, report. I did have a conversation with Sheriff Lancaster uh, after the budget meeting. And as you recall, he is posting the fourth deputy <coughs> position. And he asked me if he could get some direction from the board um, sooner than later. Uh, does, does the board want him to post for a school resource officer slash detective position? Uh, I, I believe that the, it would probably be good for the sheriff if he had some direction from the board. It's my opinion that we hire a professional to run that contract. And if he says that's what he needs to do, then that's what he needs to do. I don't, I don't know that I'm qualified to make a determination as to whether Sheriff Lancaster needs a school resource officer slash detective or another patrol deputy. I think I think that we would defer to his judgment on that. If he thinks that's the best use of the resources that the town is providing him, then he uses it that way. And if we determine that that's not cut the mustard, then we need to go back to him and say, no, that's not working. Okay. That would be my opinion. Any other thoughts on that? Mr. Moody. Understanding what the sheriff said the other night, he's willing to do any direction that we give him as far as put on another officer slash patrol officer or bring in another person that's going to do a dual role, which is fill-ins, uh, vacations and stuff, and also at the, at the school. That's my, that's my feelings on it, is that that, that officer that he's going to bring in, the, the, the so-called new officer, uh, I think should be doing that, given that direction, you know. At least do it for a while to see how it's going to work. And uh, my main concern in doing it that way is, is I'm, I'm more comfortable having an officer around that school more often than less. Mm -hmm. other, other than that, you know, it, 
if they're not tied up, and I don't know when that's going, when that happens to be, and they're just going to stop by, all, the, all they're going to be doing is observing the the inside of the building, the outside of the building. There's no interaction uh, with kids like this program will involve. And to me, I mean, if you're not going to interact with them, it's a waste of time because you're a necessary evil until they have some kind of personal contact with you. Is that what you <clears throat> no, the way the sheriff, if I understood him correctly, he's talking about this would be somewhat like a promotion process? Well, he, he'll post it. Now, any of the three current deputies could apply for this position, and then he would have to backfill their position with a, a patrol. Because of contract. Yeah. So, I'm not sure the dynamics of the current situation, but we have somebody in the academy, so if, say, you promote someone in the next two months, three months, we'll be on the one person working the road, the other one's in the academy? I don't think so. No. I don't uh, think anybody's in the academy right now. Race, 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 race and Wood's getting ready to go to the academy. Right, right, I, don't, right. I don't know if he's in it or that. I don't know if it's that old okay. at this point. So, but the sheriff has been filling those with reserves. If you look at the report, there's a number of deputies that are mentioned that are not the traditional three Madison right. deputies doing some of those coverage. My guess is Deputy Wood was absent from this report, so he may be deputy. But I believe the sheriff is committed to maintaining that coverage while the position is still. And we don't have gaps in coverage. We have somebody in the academy. The only thing that I, the only thing that I would say is that I, I think it's a good idea, and I kind of agree with Jack. I just want to make sure that we're covering the shifts that we need to cover so we have the, the coverage that we have had in the past year or two. I mean, with the, with the two to six being not covered, I mean, I think that I think as long as we have people that are able to cover these, and I know we have all kinds of people, sheriff deputies in town, so that's a good thing. And I think, I think they're able to cover that, and they, they seem to come running. So could I, is it safe to say the consensus of the board is to allow the sheriff to go ahead and post this position as an SRO position, and we will continue to, to, to wait and see how it develops and maintain, as long as coverage is maintained and the right person is found and that, that sort of thing, so he can move forward. I would say, is everybody in agreement on that? We okay? Yeah. All right, so we'll move forward. All right. And code enforcement officer Susan Hathaway is here. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about the fee schedule coming up next. But I did want to just point out that she and the planning board have been doing what I think is outstanding work, uh, meeting every other week, probably since January, to handle the Woodland Senior Living Center, the folks that are rehabilitating the Somerset Residential on Schuster Road, and now um, Bob's Cash Fuel has put in a uh, renovation of their facilities. So. I just wanted to commend her and the planning board for meeting every other week to make sure that these things get the proper public hearings and notices and, and all that stuff. And if you have any questions about that, how any of those projects are coming, I'm sure Susan can answer. And in addition to those, we have um, updated, we finished the floodplain ordinance update, which hadn't been updated since 94, 95. Um, and we're working right now on the shoreline zoning uh, ordinance. So both of those we're hoping to have ready uh, by town meeting. And um, the fee schedule was something that we've been updating, and then also uh, the building permit. So right now our building permit is a three-tiered um, application that is not available online. People have to physically come into the office to have it, um, you know, to to pick it up. So what I've been doing is photocopying, photocopying the application and mailing it out. So I'm hoping to incorporate all the information that we need to comply with code. And on the back side is a, um, a graph so that you can draw out your site plan. And that will be available online so that people can fill it out and then come to town, to the town office and and have everything ready instead of having to fill it out right then and there in the town office. It's just going to be, um, they'll be able to spend a little bit more time and thought when they're filling it out because it's on their own time as opposed to, you know, sitting down at my desk trying to go through 
you know, a sheet of paper that contains hopefully a lot of really good information. So I hope that that's going to be a step up. And it's sort of hand in hand with that B schedule. So I'm fashioning them both so that they use the same language and refer to the same information so that hopefully, um, like I said, they're, they work in tandem with each other. The only technical thing I would ask is that if you have the floodplain and shoreland zoning ordinances ready for the select board, that we get them by the, that May 8th meeting we're talking about. Okay. That in floodplain <coughs> sounds like it's ready, shoreland may not be, but they really need to have those approved in a public meeting prior to town meeting. Okay. May 8th, good. All right, so I guess we can move right over to the, yeah, can move right over to the e schedule. Okay. So, um, Tim, let me know that um, you guys discussed this at the last meeting and there was some uh, discussion about whether or not the caps were a good idea or not. The planning board felt strongly that, um, first of all, when I first brought up even the idea of in initiating a change at all, the planning board um, we're somewhat resistant, and I, I feel like the planning board is um, almost like a litmus of what we're going to find for how the town is going to respond. And so we didn't want to roll out too much too soon. Um, and we felt that going from a $20 flat fee for every project, whether it's residential, whether it's a shed, whether it's a, um, you know, million dollar home, or a Woodlands project, it's $20. So we um, have put some thought into, you know, and, and did a quite an extensive comparison with other towns that are similarly sized, as well as towns that are in our proximity. So I feel like um, we came up with what we think makes sense. The only thing that I changed was the minimum for new construction under commercial. I upped that to one hundred and fifty dollars, which I. You changed it to one hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay. So on ours, it's one hundred. Yes. Okay. Um, and this has a. The planning board um, has not seen this. Well, I did email it out um, because. Just last week, I added the minimum and maximum per, per type of mm -hmm. structure that's going to be, you know, permitted. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a change last week that I hadn't, so we'll look at that tomorrow night. And hopefully they will have their final, you know, look at this and, and then we can put it before you. And the good thing about having it on a fee schedule like this is that you know, if next year we feel differently, or even in six months, you have the opportunity, the select board has the opportunity to make adjustments as you see fit. Do we have any questions? I think it looks good. Do you want the planning board to look at it one more time? I do. And then we'll bring it back at the April 22nd meeting yes. for a final vote. Yep. Good. And just so everybody's clear, this is the speed schedule that's created to be a reference to all the ordinances that we have. So instead of having a fee of $20 or $50 in the ordinance, it'll be in this, and the ordinance will refer to the schedule. Ready? All right. Uh, number three, discuss town meeting moderator. So as some of you know, Ernie Hilton, attorney, uh, Ernie the attorney, uh, usually moderates our town meetings, has done so for the last four years. Um, he called to let me know that he'll actually be in California the week of June 10th, which is our regular town meeting. Um, so I, I reached out to two people. One was Phil Curtis, who is my father, who has done moderating in Madison for many years, and he moderates for many small towns uh, around us. Um, in the event that this board or Kathy or the anybody in the public was not comfortable with my father moderating the meeting. I also asked him for a reference and he gave me Bob Nutting, who was a town councilman in Oakland. And uh, Bob Nutting used to moderate Oakland's town meetings 
until he went on the town council, and now my dad moderates the Oakland town meetings. Um, I've talked with Kathy, and I've talked with Chairman Vinziano, and I think both of them are comfortable either way. I just wanted to be a full disclosure, uh, not to just kind of assume that Phil Curtis was okay. I wanted to run it by the board and see what their thoughts were. Mr. Moody. He's done it quite a few times. Yes. And we never had a problem with him moderating. Uh, and I don't see any reason why we should go out of town for, for a new moderator or somebody we have never used before. Right. I think the town's comfortable with, with Mr. Curtis. That was my feelings too, and I, but I want to make sure Tim felt comfortable also. Yeah. And that, so if he doesn't have a problem with it, Kathy didn't have a problem with it, I thought we could use yeah. Mr. Curtis. And the real Mr. Curtis. <laughs> the original. I agree. Oh, that's good. All right, we'll go with that. I'll check his availability. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, number four, discuss tip spending priorities. Okay, this um, <clears throat> information, I leave some of it to you in your packets, and I slipped a, uh, a historical data sheet on your table earlier that basically looks like this, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I thought I'd give it to you so you have it. Uh, this dates back to 2005. And I put in very large categories um, the type of spending that the town has used TIP dollars for, such as the marketing of the business uh, park, uh, random dues and fees, revitalization projects, which is a nice way of saying tearing down buildings, um, the revolving loan and matching grant, the Department of Economic Development, um, the large capital purchases, for example, this this match for these Jaws of Life that will come out of Don's TIF account for his fire. Uh, road paving, we've spent nearly a million dollars on paving roads. Sidewalks, $67,000 in sidewalks. And then the money that's used every, every year to offset taxes, that's been since 2013, but that's made up $1.5 million. So there's $5 million, $5.3 million of TIF spending over the last 13 years there. And I wanted to, the board to have that to start thinking forward over the next 15 years uh, where you'll probably have a similar amount of money, somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six million dollars of TIF revenue coming in over that time uh, to determine what it is that you want to do with, with that revenue. Um, so where the TIF comes from is in this sheet here. Um, and basically, the reason that this backyard farm's TIF allows such a large amount of money to come into that TIF account is because of the, the Betty valuation. The Betty is Business Equipment Tax Exemption Program. So any company that has a large amount of equipment, like Backyard Farms has about $16.7 million worth of equipment, personal property, um, they don't pay any taxes on that regardless of the TIF or not. Um, if someone were to purchase Madison paper and bring in $20 million worth of equipment, they would not pay us any taxes on that. It would automatically be approved under the state's Betty program. The state then reimburses the town for about 60 cents on the dollar for that. The reason this is so lucrative is there was a window in 2007 that allowed for any uh, TIF projects going on to have 100% Betty, or what's called enhanced Betty. And you can thank Mr. Van Tynan for all of this training that he gave me five years ago. Uh, the enhanced Betty allows the state to return to the town 100% of that. But it doesn't go into our general fund, it goes into our TIF account. So you can see what we receive from just their property taxes is that second line, just under $200,000, $199,000. That's what Backyard Farms uh, pays in taxes that we keep. You add to that the 359, that's what the state pays us for that 100% Betty. And so that $559,000 is what the town receives right now every year from Backyard Farms. So if you were to go over to the next column and see the Backyard Farms column, of their property taxes, they re get returned $466,000. That's the credit enhancement agreement that's part of the TIF. 
Backyard Farms pays all their taxes, and they get back $466,000 a year that they use to pay off loans, to, to reinvest in the company however they see fit. So Backyard Farms has a 30-year TIF, but a 20-year uh, credit enhancement agreement. So that deal that they get, that $466,000 back, ends in 2025. When that deal ends, then all of that money comes to the town. So you see that bottom number on the, on the page there that starts with a 1? That's what the town would receive in tax revenues after this credit enhancement agreement ends. So my <laughs> guess is, and that would all go into the TIF fund, it would not go into the general fund. It's still really that, as long as you have a TIF district, you have to have that special account. So my guess is that sometime between now and 2025, Backyard Farms is going to discover this, and they're going to come into the town and perhaps try to renegotiate the, the last few years of that TIF arrangement. So the way it stands now, about 550000 is the revenue for the next couple of years at, at least for, for TIP. Any, any questions on that? It is darn confusing, I know. But so, this, so this list here is to offset taxes. The other offset of taxes here is, is sidewalks and road paving. And we're, we're doing those to, we're doing those and we're offsetting having to put any tax dollars with that. Right. When I say we're still, we're still doing those things. When I say this 1.5 million to offset taxes, you mean the 200? I think Steve is a couple of When I refer to that, I refer to this part of this. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any comments? Anything you want to think about this for a while? Well, I did want to share, because we've had a couple of people ask questions. I did want to share this last sheet here, which is, if you haven't, most of you have seen this, this is how we structure our TIF budget or economic development budget. Um, so all the way over, the, the, the gray area is basically the fixed cost. This is what we use to offset taxes. And since 2013, we've used a number that started up at 277000 and worked its way down to about 230000 but this incorporates a portion of certain salaries and certain, um, certain services that can be covered in part by the TIF dollars. All this was approved when the town amended its TIF back in 2013 and allowed for these to be TIF approved expenses. <coughs> Over on this side is what I refer to as the variable spending. We know we're going to spend this and every month uh, out of the treasurer and finance officer, every quarter, I should say, they move that money from TIF over to the general fund. The other items in the non-gray area are basically uh, the small budget items that you can spend TIF dollars on. Um, we have in the budget, uh, the budget figure for 2020 is all the way over on the uh, far right. 29,600 for various economic development things. That includes money set aside for events like Christmas and the Madison Anson days, fireworks, uh, those certain festival type things are, are in there. Some consulting, some um, web page work, that's all in that economic development department. Back when we had an economic development person, they were paid out of that, of that category. Um, Right underneath there, where it says matching grants, you'll see there has been no funding for matching grants for the last several years. We did matching grants from 2013, 14, and 15, I think. Um, and I don't think we've done, well, I know we haven't done one for the last four years. That's a category that I'm getting people to ask, or uh, people are asking me about, is the, the matching grant uh, program. Um, the next section is highway, where we have concentrated a lot of TIF dollars over the last couple of years, and I wanted Jeff to talk a little bit about River Road, because we have done River Road projects three years in a row, and we probably have a few more years to go. Um, also on this list, I've put in money for sidewalks, um, and of course we have uh, road salt and calcium. Uh, that is a savings to the general fund taxpayer, because we can pay for the road salt and calcium out of the... Uh, Bless you, additional TIF revenues. Um, 
Then the last, last couple categories is, is fire and uh, what we pay the KV cap transportation bus out of. Um, those are smaller amounts. But I wanted Jeff to kind of give us an update where we are on River Road because while we talk about lazy money for capital paving, those are all non-TIF projects. We're still going to work on River Road, but it's going to, it's going to be costly. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right, headline. I got a little packet together here. The very last page is the River Road project. Uh, I've got a, a price from the director of George. I'll show you that. I'll show you that. Uh, from the local contractor of $145,000. Um, that was for widening, widening the road at 22 feet. It does not include extras such as uh, pole removal. Uh, there's a couple of pipes in there that need to be uh, put in at and or replaced. And uh, so that's a, quite a considerable amount of money to spend on 1,700 feet of road. So this last page estimate, to be clear, is just on that section by the gravel pit. Yes, from the entrance into the gravel pit now, down, uh, headed south, 1,700 feet. And for years, just so everybody's clear, it's been the town's concern that this road that is closest to the river is deteriorating. Right, that's once, there's two sections. That's the first section, the second se section is above to the north of the gravel pit entrance. And that will be the second section. So this price here that I have got is for the full width replacement of the road. Uh, one of the options, there's a lot of gravel in there, but there are also pockets of clay that will need to be dug out, excavated out, and filled in with some gravel. Um, one of the options that we have, instead of setting that whole road over the full width of 22 feet, we could match and do half of the road, keep half of the existing road, and add 11 feet to it. Toward the pit. Toward the pit. And then take the 11 feet that's closest to the river and either excavate that out or just grass it over. So you still have a 20 foot, 22 foot roadway, but it's going to be 11 feet closer to the pit. And do the same up above. That would cut that cost almost in half. And that cost you're referring to is 145. Yes, correct. So they're going to stop that stuffing off. Yes, well, that gives you 11 more feet. That little problem, that will never bother again. I mean, I don't believe that. Looking down at that bank last fall, I had to be keeping an eye on it, and it's, it's not giving out. I think it's just it's just sinking all mm -hmm. doing because it's a clay spot. Yeah. But the bank, the bank itself is all stable. Okay. Mr. Moody. Jeff, is that an area that, that needs a uh, railing? Guardrail? Uh, possibly, yes. I, I don't like really putting guardrail at home because you can't get rid of the snow in the wintertime. And you know, it, it would be a safety issue. I would be more concerned about the area north of that for a guardrail section. That's a lot closer to the edge. And that, that bank is failing off. That bank is failing as the vegetation dies and the trees die, um, that would be my first choice if we were to put guardrail because that's still going to give you <coughs> 11 feet plus yeah. I believe there's another four foot shoulder there so you've got 15 feet. 15 feet yeah. Okay. What's the difference Jeff in this 145 and half of that? I mean, what, what are you doing here that you're not doing? Well you're only, you're only, you're only doing half the work so you're only putting 11 feet of pavement down, you're only excavating. So this is, this is excavating the whole That's the, the full width, 22 feet, I believe it's 1,700 feet. And you're only using half of the, uh, uh, the geotextile, which is a fabric that goes between the, the original ground and the gravel that you're putting down to keep that, that soil separated. So is that going to make it, I mean, is that going to work? The 73,000? Project. Yeah, this is just this was just a budget. This was just a budget, you know, a budget number. I guess the question is, for 145,000, your road will be 22 feet from the edge that goes down to the river. Yep. For half of that, your road will be 11 feet from the edge that goes down to the river. So we're just hoping we're. 
I think you'll have to plan your length. Time. While that other section of road, that half of the 11 feet that we're not going yeah. to use anymore is, is, all, is all stable other than that one, that one spot that has been sinking. Right. It's also going to help on that, on that corner coming out of the pit. Well, the, will, that, will it make much difference? No, it's not because over? we're going to move that. We're going to move that entrance of that pit farther south, down toward my place. Oh, down to your yes, place? Yes, in, in the middle of the pit, so that the, the uh, drivers exiting the pit will have more of a visual. So they'll be able down. to see traffic Correct. coming up. Okay, yes. that, that's, that was one of my concerns. And yeah. it will be papered sure so the water that. runs back into the pit, plus yeah. also a paved apron. So we won't be dragging all the rocks and stone out into the road, because yeah. we have to clean that off. Of, Sometimes a guy in pit comes out and cleans that off because it is yeah. a hazard to motorcycles when oh, yeah. stuff is dragged yeah. out in the road. Yeah. So the changing of the entrance to the pit, is that included in this quote? Yes, okay. and that's how I've been working with the contractor and making sure that he's going to put that where he needs it that's going to service him the best. Mm -hmm. So, so what are you looking for us? Right, well, I'm, I'm just letting you know that these river road costs are going to absorb a lot of your available TIF dollars this coming year. Mm -hmm. Because written in here, back, and back to this two-shaded uh, page, if you see capital roads down at the bottom, uh, way before total highway, uh, we're, we're budgeting $171,000 to continue, not to complete, but to continue the river road. Now that $171,000 Road Commissioner got that quote figured in before he got this quote that you've seen, but it's for different sections. This would be paving up to where we left off last year, up to the gravel pit, and from the gravel pit up to Seoul. Those two things, not the gravel pit project, but those two other ends of it are 171000 You add the gravel pit work in there now, if you do the whole thing, that's another $145,000. you are talking well over 325000 for that whole thing. Now if we cut that moving the road over in half, you're still talking about $250,000 to finish River Road. Steve, why wouldn't we pave up to where we're going to do the gravel pit road job and do that as opposed to leaving a, skipping a spot, paving into Solon? Because, I mean, that road's, I mean, it's not like any other road, it, it's bumpy a little bit, but, you know, it's no, I, it would, would seem to make more sense to just, instead of skipping that spot that we're rebuilding, pave up to where that is, get the rebuilding done, and then once the rebuilding's all done, then just, once that's done, next year, next year budget to, to pave the rest of it to sold. So you're saying pave up to the project? Pave up to the project, do the project. So, I mean, we've been we've been messing around with this with this road thing for uh, well that a project long time. started keep in mind that project started as the few past winters and early springs that the highway went out there and just started to, and started yep. digging and excavating yep. and and moving a lot of that material at you know, little cost to the town right. and you know the years have gone by with the, these past two winters we just haven't had time to get right. out there and. Uh, well, I think that's part of the conversation that you and I have had. Is right. it, just, it just seems to be like dragging on. So let's just let's just get it done. We know it's gonna it's gonna be a benefit to that area to get it done. It's gonna it's gonna make ease of access in and out of that pit better for the contractor, obviously. But it's gonna take care of that. It's gonna take care of that spot where that road is rolling off from there, or the, the it, it appears to be rolling off, particularly with some of the traffic that's going up through there. So. I've seen traffic going up through there to the to the Solon landfill and coming down from the Solon landfill, and I've met them there, and and those trucks going to waste management for the Solon landfill. Well, see that the paving the paving part of it is going to be included in our paving projects this summer. So when that goes out to bid, I don't believe there's no way that that can be estimated and and be done by the middle of August or the end of July. Okay, so so you're splitting it. Just because of because of the construction of, of time, basically. Yes. Right. Okay. You know, if that area was all prepared and it was all dug out and all ready to be to be based in, I, I would have absolutely no problem doing that. Yeah. So it just seemed to make more sense to do. Well, it would. But it's, the only thing you're going to have is moving up the road. You'll have a joint there. Is, is the only thing that you will notice when you travel over. Yeah, that's. 
and those two sections of road, I don't believe will last another season with the truck traffic that's on it, especially from where we stopped last year up to the pit, and from the right. pit up to Solon is, is deteriorating rapidly. Yeah. So basically what we're saying is we're, we're 171,000 this year for that, and then another 171, or if we're going to do half of that, right? In the next. So the 171 is just both sides of the pit. Right. right. So that's, that's this year. Right. For pay. Right. So then another 171, we're going to do it. 145. Oh, I'm sorry, 145. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll do the rest of that. Or 73. Or, or half, half of that 145. Correct. Right. Right. Any other comments, Mr. Moody? Will this work, Jeff? Will it work? Of course it'll work. Will it work right? Yeah, that will work right. Cool. Well, okay. I mean, we, this board throws a lot of stuff at you. Oh, it'll work, right? I want to hear from you. <laughs> of course it'll work. This is the proper way to do it. You know, it is the proper way to do it. I've been working close with Jeff and I've been talking back and forth. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we've discussed what needs to be done out there. And he knows what needs to be done out there. And he is a contractor because he agreed to give that land to the town to set that road over with the agreement that uh, he got some of the gravel that was in there and, and he had the first chance to turn the work down. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So River Road is one large chunk of the, the TIF dollars for this year and, and next year. Uh, we have not set aside any money for sidewalks in the last two years, and Jeff has been looking at some sidewalk activity. And Lori Manzer from One Madison Avenue wanted to make sure that the board got this tonight. Uh, those are some pictures that sh they took at, in front of One Madison. They've been asking about a restructuring of their sidewalk in front of One Madison Avenue for a couple of years now. Um, and so they thought they'd be proactive and get on the list early. So, um, and Jeff, I was going to say, okay. Will Lori leave me out or what? Lori, Lori, <laughs> she, figured her, here. she figured her brother would do it to you. Yes, there's, there's two projects that uh, need to be addressed in town to keep sidewalks this year, and this being one of them, right in front of one Madison Avenue. I don't know, she's obviously got some pictures and stuff here. It's, it's out of shape. There's a lot of cracks in it. Uh, some of the elderly people have a hard time getting around with their wheelchairs and their walkers and so on. And uh, so it would start at their, par at their parking lot on Madison Avenue and go around the corner <coughs> approximately 10 feet to take the worst part. And in front of their building, there's a piece of granite uh, that's kind of fallen out and he needs to have some foundation work done first. It's actually right by the where the water, the fire was served, page in a fourth page. There's a water right, this piece of granite right there mm -hmm. needs to come out, and the building needs some foundation work. And Jim would like to get that fixed as soon as possible before he goes back to work. Um, and it, it does, it does need to be to be fixed. I've got an estimate that I, in the packet that I have given you guys from Fine Line Paving of what it costs to do that. I have it out and highlighted. There's two or three different numbers in there. I believe it was fifty-five hundred dollars. No. So the, the first page says one Madison Avenue, forty-seven hundred. Forty-two seventy. Forty-two seventy. And that would be the removal of the existing pavement, uh, replace the granite and 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 uh, new curb from the end of the granite up to their parking lot. Is one of the projects. Uh, Lori has, and Jim has asked for quite a few years now, and uh, it's getting to the point now that we're getting a little bit more concerned that it gets repaired. Okay. Sue Sean. That sidewalk, right in front of the door there, that memory surgery, right? That sidewalk's about to step down from the walk to the road about that. Uh, it is, and it's, it's such an elevation change that there's really not a whole lot you can do to change that. We've done, it looks like when they originally done that, they did the best that they could have done with what they had because there's also a catch basin between yeah. the door and Main Street in right. the sidewalk. Right. So that even complicates things even more. Yeah. So that grade right there, with the exception of the curve here toward the parking lot, will be two inches higher to 
offset this slope a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the only grade change because you can't really do anything here in this granite curve. It's, it's just too steep. Yeah. And the way the building is into the building, I'm, I'm guessing if I remember right years and years ago, there was always two steps to get into that building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 That's one of the projects. The other project is in front of the Big Apple on Old Point Avenue. That's your second one of your other papers in your uh, package. Uh, I've been in touch with CN Brown. They are going to be doing their parking lot this year, and the sidewalk will be part of our responsibility. So I've been working with him and talking with him and, and fine line paving with the estimate to come up with that price right there. So when we do that, or when they do that, we can all work together on that and have hopefully a nice job there. So when you come into town, it looks, it looks like it'll be a nice job. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by parking lot? All the way over to Subway or? Well, they're going to do to their property. <clears throat> I don't know what the guy spoke, stopped and spoke with Shauna today about talking to the owner and he, she was, said she would contact him to see if he would be interested so, in doing Some of those holes right at the entrance are. Yes. Like far over. And they need to regrade their whole parking lot because water just doesn't go anywhere. And there's a cash basin in, in front of the Big Apple. I'm going to get an old DOT, see if we can lower that uh, two and a half inches. That will set that down so all that water will funnel right into there instead of laying in the parking lot. I think there's, I think CM Brown tanks, part of their tanks are on. So I Possibly. I think, if memory serves me right, I think when they put the new tanks in the ground there, I think that was part of the deal there. Um, but that, neither here nor there, I mean, the, the parking lot, I was there the other day and I was thinking, I have somebody or something. Like He's going to send his uh, surveyor up and yeah. survey the lot before yeah. they even start doing yeah. anything to make sure they know where they are and where they need to be. Yeah. But um, we are responsible for the section of sidewalk. So the plan is to start right at the end of um, the uh, subway building and head south to the, the dentist office, which would be the opposite row right there. Do that whole section. What are you, what are you going to do? To raise except for an entrance, or are you going to leave it? We're going to leave it flat just the way it is, except we're going to put four inches of pavement in that area, and so is in CN Brown. So when their trailer trucks come in there to dump. There's plenty of plenty of mix in there to to hold sustain those trucks, okay. especially this time of year. I just, I just wondering yeah. I mean, because it's like a driveway in and out. It, it is. You need. And we've been we've been doing that the last couple of years around town. Anywhere the intersections get a lot of heavy truck truck traffic, we've been yeah. putting four inches of mix down. Yeah. That seems to do the trick and, and hold up well. Yeah. And the other the other information I have on those other sidewalks, there are some sidewalks in town that are getting neglected and haven't been done for years. We have done some work up on Main Street, or some overlays. We've done some on Western Avenue over the years. Uh, you know, the main concerns now, we're looking at Maple Street and Western Avenue. Okay? The curve's falling apart. It's just by the fitness curve, which is mixed curve. There's no granite. And uh, what I did was I got a lineal foot price for per foot price for a rebuild of the curb and sidewalk. And I have them all broken down on those, on those sheets from street to street. So if I understand you right, Jeff, your priorities are one Madison Avenue and Sam Brown. Correct. And so we had, in that TIF budget, I had put $15,000 for sidewalks. So that would take town, right? Mm -hmm. that those two projects right there. So as far as the TIF discussion, is there any more questions on sidewalks? Thank you, Jeff. That's very good detailed information. The, uh, so as far as the TIF discussion goes, like we kind of get the one to give the board a lay of the land. And we've, we've really invested in River Road, and we really need to finish it. Uh, sidewalks are a priority that can be spent on TIF funding, or you can raise it on taxation, uh, general taxation. Um, you know, as this board comes and looks at the next TIF budget, probably in the next couple of months, um, if you want it to look different than what I've got projected here, I, I need to get some, some input on some other things. 
So I just wanted to get the ball rolling on that. All right, so what we're looking at basically is the difference is going to be the grant program. Well, the, there has not been, I have not put funding in for a grant program right. again this year. Right. They have doing requests for that.
that section of the road. Oh, I see. Not anymore. I see. Oh, I see. So if you would, for example, if you would post the golf course road, you could travel the golf course road with a truck because 201 is not posted and that section of 43 is not posted right. anymore. Right. So the reason we bring this to the board is to see if the board would be willing to approve this on to town meeting. Um, I, I would recommend that it doesn't need a public hearing. Uh, one of the things that the road commissioner has been commended for is he's actually gone out and talked to some of the people that might be affected, uh, like North Star Orchards on Orchard Road and that sort of thing. So he's been proactive at kind of getting the word out where it's most important. All right, so we're looking for a motion to send Chapter 694, Roads and Highways, with changes to the town meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to send Chapter 694, Roads and Highways, to town meeting. Any questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Moody, selectman's concerns. None, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Savage? Just, just one, I guess a little more clarification, I guess from the town manager on the grant funding the Sheriff's Department has for their county SRO and how Madison didn't get involved in that or was not included in it. I really don't have all the details on that. Somerset Public Health. When, when Sheriff Lancaster refers to Somerset Heart and Health, he's referring to Somerset Public Health. It's just a name change for a few years ago. And so Somerset Public Health wrote a COPS Fast grant several years ago for an SRO for Somerset County. And that position was granted and uh, awarded, and Deputy Pike has been serving in that capacity, I believe, in the Bingham School District, the Carabec School District. I don't know if he goes up to Forest Hills and Jackman or not. Uh, I think maybe just those two schools are better. Skowhegan has their own SRO. Um, and I'd have to ask, I don't know wh why or if Madison was included or excluded. I can certainly research they, it and find They have that before we had the, or with Somerset County? We had our own police department when they had that. I believe they did that grant before we changed it. Oh, okay. well, maybe they did it. Maybe they did it. That it was. There's quite a lot. Okay. Yeah. That's fair enough then. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, Hans. Mr. Duchamp. Good for me. Any citizens' concerns? Citizens' concerns? Citizens' concerns. Okay. We don't have any. All right. Any uh, looking for a motion to adjourn? Okay. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor? All in favor of the motion carries. Seven adjourns. That would be four. 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 That would be Let's remember the TV still. Is that? Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 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 to understand why those.